All right, hey everyone, it's LS, and this is gonna be the patch 7.22 notes rundown. This video is not going to talk about the runes and masteries. That'll be an entirely separate video after I've taken time to look at everything off stream, uh, and then I'll end up probably making a video off stream for that as well. Uh, currently, I am live streaming on Twitch as I do this video, so I'm gonna skim through everything. It looks like we have a really, really big patch on our hands, so I'm probably gonna have to talk about quite a lot. Um, other than that, uh, again, Zoe video, alter, uh, different video, the link for the Zoe video will be in the description below, and uh, the Runes and Masteries will be an entirely separate video in itself, so let's just uh, get right into it. Um, so we're not going to talk about any of the Runes and Masteries, we're just going to go right back down to Champions. Uh, our old Rune system uh, gave Champions uh, a lot of raw base stats, and especially early game, those stats heavily impact the feeling of basic actions like last hitting and jungle clears. We want a lot uh, of the instincts players have about the game to remain consistent, so we're pumping a lot of the base stats directly back into the champions themselves. For the most part, this means health, armor, or attack damage, but we've taken the opportunity to introduce a new stat into the game, bonus attack speed at level 1. That's really interesting. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at all of the champions. We have a lot to go through. Um, I'll make sure that these are timestamped in the uh, description below for people that want to find that, so let's get it right into it. So, uh, looks like they're also releasing a new champion this patch. His name is Atrox. Uh, base armor is uh, 24 to 33, so obviously this just uh, factors in if he had the armor seals. W, blood price. Uh, base damage 45 to 185, scaling to 50 to 190. That's great, that doesn't do enough for him. E, Blades of Torment, base damage 70 to 230, 75 to 235, so uh, not really a meaningful buff at all. I, I Now, again, un until I know enough about the runes, uh, the runes and what they can do for certain champions, I'm going to go off and assume that Atrox uh, will remain a, a terrible champion. Um, just terrible, you know, champion reveal. Uh, I don't know why you would release this abomination at the same time as Zoe, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, Ari, base health, uh, 514 to 526, so she gets a, a little bit of flat health, and um, health growth stat actually goes up by 12. Uh, again, don't know entirely how this ties in with the removal of uh, the HP per level stuff and whatever else, so I uh, can't really say too much about it. Again, another champion that we're going to have to really wonder what it is that's going on with the runes. Um, Ari is not in the worst of spots, but she's probably just a B-plus uh, level champion right now. Uh, if we're to grade stuff from uh, God tier to S to A to B and then to C, and then when you get all the way down to F, you get uh, Atrox. So uh, that's pretty much for Ari. Uh, Akali, base health uh, is increased only by 6, it seems, or almost 7. Health growth stat, 85 to 90. Base armor stat goes up by a little bit. That's nice. Um, it actually... That... that uh, base armor stat might actually help her out in some matchups where she didn't actually get flat armor anyway. She just would have opted for HP, so that's an interesting little change. Uh, Alistar, that's a very big base armor change. Um, so that's a pretty sizable buff. Uh, with the death of Ardent Sensor, or not the death, but, you know, Ardent Sensor has definitely been crippled, and uh, Ardent Sensor will go back into hiding and, uh, you know, waiting for the next sequel, which will come sometime probably around next year. In the middle of the summer, something is going to come out that impacts the Ardent Sensor type supports, you know, that'll help it out, because that's always how these trilogies work. Uh, Amumu, base armor, uh, he actually doesn't get that much. Uh, bonus attack speed, however, at level 1 is pretty interesting. Um, but then again, I think Amumu is one of the champions that he could sometimes take attack speed on runes, so I don't think this is actually the biggest change, although I do think that it's a buff regardless, so he gets a little bit of love right there. Anivia, I don't like really talking about this champion, but we can talk about it for right now. Um, she is getting a, a little bit of love, but not really that sizable. Okay, uh, the lady herself uh, ends up getting 13 HP at level 1, and then she gets increased health growth stat. Not really going to change anything. She is still going to be the single best champion for carrying you know, yourself out of uh, gold, silver, or bronze, You know, if you actually value and have some self-respect, or no self-respect, depending on how you look at it. Um, she's still going to be good down there. Ash base attack damage is up um, by almost 10. Uh, this is going to be a little bit interesting because of, you know, the way that she used to be able to be a little bit flexible with some runes and masteries. Not the biggest change in the world. I don't think that it's actually going to propel her back into the meta without some additional assistance from uh, the new rune system. Aurelian's Soul. Base health, 550 to 562. Health growth stat, all right? Pretty standard. So we're just going to start moving through the ones that are standard and doesn't have anything too interesting to talk about. Base armor, now this is one that is in fact interesting to talk about, um, because this is a change that not all bards were going to run the flat armor. So in a sense, bard actually can be considered buffed in this sense, rather than it just being a generic change like some stuff that we're seeing on 
Aurelian Soul, and Azir. Okay, uh, Blitzcrank, uh, that's a pretty sizable buff. I, I really like the change that it is with him right there. Uh, Brand, base health is going up. That's a generic change. Uh, base armor on Braum has gone up quite a lot. Uh, w stand behind me, base armor 15 to 25, scaling to 17.5 to 27.5. So some really nice buffs for Braum. I like how some of these melee uh, engage supports are being buffed, primarily uh, the Blitzcrank, Braum, and Alistar. And now they're starting to get some love, so... You know what's coming next. Uh, we just had the Ardent supports, and now we're going to have the Targon supports. And then eventually we're not going to actually go into the Spell Thief supports because they're not really supports anyway. All right, but anyways, Caitlyn. Uh, base attack damage, um, not really too much of a change going on here. Uh, base armor, um, sort of could be a buff, depending on how greedy the Caitlyn player was. Uh, if she didn't opt for the nine flat armor seals. Um, in some matchups, sometimes Caitlyn would actually just opt for the flat uh, HP, and so in that sense it could actually be considered a buff, but again, it's also relative to the other champions that she's going to be facing up against. Camille, base armor, um, another change here. Camille doesn't always go 9 flat armor up in the top lane. There are variations to her yellow seals, so <clears throat> this can be perceived as a buff. Base attack damage, um, not really... This yeah, not really too much of a change, generic change right there. Tactical Sweep, base damage, 65 to 185 scaling to 70 to 190. E Hookshot, 70 to 250. Not really too much of a change right here. Cassiopeia, uh, generic. Uh, Cho'Gath, uh, generic as well, but not entirely generic because, again, Cho'Gath, one of those champions that used to be able to get away um, with uh, the HP. So it, it really depends on how the player would have been using his runes. Um, so in that sense, I think that it's completely fine. I think this is actually a buff. Uh, not all Cho'Gaths ran uh, base attack damage on the reds and stuff. Sometimes there were some different variations and stuff. Um, one of the things that yeah, uh, someone in chat is actually pointing out is one of the good things about these base AD buffs uh, to some champions is actually the interaction with Trinity Force and Iceborne Gauntlet um, and then obviously Sterax. Uh, so in, in that sense, that, that's actually important to consider. So my mistake here uh, on this, the base attack damage is a pretty big buff actually for Camille. Um, because she is a champion that builds both Trinity Force and Sterax. Um, so this is actually quite sizable. Thank you for someone in Twitch chat uh, pointing that out to me. That wasn't uh, going through my head immediately. Um, okay, uh, base attack damage change for Corky. So this is going to be something I actually start talking about now that it was just uh, brought up to me and I was for some reason skipping over it and not considering it. Nice uh, little buff to Trinity Force. Uh, base armor 23.38 to 28. Not really a big change there, especially because in mid lane, oftentimes Corky just went for the scaling HP. It would take a little bit of armor, and I think that's actually what Riot's going for here by only giving him about a 5 flat armor, because oftentimes the split that you could find would be a, a 5 4 or a 2 2, uh, 2 2 5. Um, so I, I think that's completely fine. Uh, Prosperous Bomb is increased by five damage as well at all ranks, so that's fine. Base attack damage, again, another buff to Sterax. Uh, Darius, however, doesn't really go Iceborne Gauntlet or Trinity Force, so not going to really find much assistance there. Base armor, uh, this is something that you could perceive as a buff, because again, Darius, one of those champions that in certain matchups did not need to actually go with all the flat armor. So nice little change right there. Uh, base armor is up on Diana, and I think this is a champion uh, that, again, you know, in mid lane, she's not going to be going for 9 flat base armor, so she's really going to like this. Uh, base health and health growth stat going up as well is going to also be advantageous for her. Dr. Mundo, base armor, 26.88 to 36. Um, okay, uh, another champion that, again, in certain matchups does not need to make use of the full armor, so it's going to be a buff in some matchups and just going to be generic in others. Bonus attack speed at level 1, 15%. This is kind of big for him because Mundo actually would take attack speed, um, and so now he has the option of continuing into attack, or he continuing with something else, um, and that can obviously impact him a little bit more and help out his early game, which definitely has some uh, weaknesses and vulnerability to it. Draven, uh, attack damage is up. Draven, a champion that he can build Trinity Force, although it is extremely rare for him to build Trinity Force, so not really going to say it's too much of a buff for him. Uh, base armor going up by 10. Draven, another one of those champions that he doesn't always take base armor, uh, or he doesn't always take 9 flat base armor, so he's going to be able to get away with this. So Tyler1 smiling somewhere right now, big brother in chat. Uh, Q spinning axe 30 to 50 to 35 to 55, E stand to side. So it looks like they're increasing all the increments by 5 on all the champions. Um, Echo, base health, health growth stat, armor. Uh, another thing for Echo. So in some matchups, again, going to be another buff uh, because Echo champion that was able to make use of the nine uh, scaling HP. So I like how they're acknowledging that and they're, they're taking it very lightly on the champions that could 
and be a little bit more flexible uh, with their runes previously. Uh, base health, a slight buff on Elise. Base attack growth, uh, 47 to 55. Not really that big of an impact on Elise, but you know what? She'll take it uh, because she wasn't really a champion that had AD in her reds uh, anyway. Not all the times. You know, there was going to be some variations depending on what you wanted to do with her. Base armor, though... Um, that's I, I think that that's completely fine as well. So other changes are generic. Evelyn Champion, I still don't actually know enough about. I've heard very conflicting uh, you know, opinions on her and you know, getting the, the ten flat armor stuff, I, I think that she's probably going to like it. Although if she was doing everything correctly, she should for the most part heal completely on rates anyway. Alright. Passive demon slash. Damage from any source puts Demon Shade on a 4 second cooldown. Damage from any champion puts Demon Shade on a 1.5 second cooldown. That's a really big buff. That, 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 that is... That's... That is a really, really big buff. That's huge. This gives her a lot of combos. I, I believe it's her W that benefits from Enhanced uh, Demon Shade. Really, really big for Evelyn. Base attack damage on Ezreal, so another buff right here because of the Trinity Force and the Iceborne Gauntlet, let's not forget about that. Don't like how they gave Ezreal a flat 10 though. Ezreal was a champion that didn't need to have the, you know, the 9 flat uh, armor seals, so very interested for whatever the reasoning would be on that. Uh, base damage on Arcane Shift as well is going up, so a little bit surprising in the Ezreal department, but he is a champion that has died down a little bit. Okay, so now let's get to f um, so we're going to go through all of these champions now, and we're going to see what has happened to them. Fiddlesticks, base armor 20 to 30. Don't like that. Would have liked to have seen him get a little bit more love this patch. He's a champion that's in a pretty bad spot, but again, we'll see what the runes give for him. Fiora. All right, yeah, let's just let's give Fiora some stuff. Why not? Uh, base armor. Uh, so another champion that didn't always need to make use of the flat armor seals. So she's just going to get a free 10 for free. You know, why not? Boast uh, base attack damage. Sometimes she builds Trinity Force. Not all the time, but sometimes she does. So going to be a buff any time that she does go for that. Passive Duelist Stance. I mean, let's just give her a little bit more percentage max HP. Now I have heard, uh, well, I mean, this ties into other champions getting more HP and stuff. Um, you know, you know, why not? Why, why not? Q Lunge. Uh, 65 to 105 to 70 to 110. I mean, why not? You know? All right. You are a very excellent champion. Fizz, uh, generic change. Galio, uh, generic change. Gangplank, base armor. He gets a flat 10. This is actually something that he is going to like. Um, and the base attack damage. Really nice buffs for Gangplank right here. Passive trial by fire. 45 to 215 plus 10 per level to 55 to 225. That's actually pretty big. He, 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 gets, a, he gets a flat 10 um, at the very end. So I, I really like the changes that he's getting here. Um, and then I, I like the attack damage because that, that's a huge amplification for his Trinity Force. He's also another champion that is able to build Serac, so tank plank, if you play it the, uh, the monkey, uh, the monkey way, you know, gonna be, uh, gonna be a pretty interesting thing. Base armor, Garen, probably someone that actually suffers, uh, you know, or not suffers, uh, benefits from this change because another person that doesn't actually always go the flat armor seals, base attack damage, really likes that. Sterax, when he does build it, is definitely going to love that. Uh, Nar base uh, armor, he actually gets a flat 10 uh, base attack damage, so this is going to impact him in certain matchups. Basic attack damage 51 to 59. Uh, this is also going to be a buff in some particular uh, matchups. Base armor mega. Um, okay, this is all fine. So, Nar, little slight buffs there. Uh, base armor on Gragas, this is uh, not going to be something that he entirely enjoys, but you know, whatever, generic. Uh, Graves, base attack damage. Um, so this is another champion. He does not build Trinity Force, doesn't build Iceborne Gauntlet, so doesn't really care all that much about it. Um, obviously, this would have been a change to Graves is that would have liked a, a more lethality heavy build, so we got that going. Base armor, uh, this is something that he does indeed enjoy, because if you actually have hands and you're kiting the camps properly, you didn't really need base armor anyway. Uh, you would have been going into the HP uh, version. Q, end of the line, base damage 40 to 100 to 45 to 105. Explosion base damage 80 to 200 scaling to 85 to 205 scaling. So Graves actually gets some some nice little love. Um, Hecarim base armor goes up by 10. Uh, base attack damage 58 to 66, really big because of the Trinity Force. And then very generic changes here, although he does get 10 at max on Devastating Charge. I think that's fine. Heimerdinger, okay. Alawi, uh, Heimer Alawi, generic. Uh, Aurelia, uh, generic as well, although a nice little buff to Trinity Force when she goes for it. Also going to... Uh, really help out our Sheen early on if she goes for that as one of the first items. Um, 
Okay, Ivern actually gets a really big buff. Um, and the reason that I say that Ivern gets a big buff is he's a champion that did not use base armor uh, whatsoever. So we'll have to see what he ends up getting now, um, you know, with the, the new rune system. So, okay. Uh, yeah, all right, let's just skip that one. Jarvan, uh, 29 to 38. Base attack damage is also up. So for the Jarvans that like to go for the Trinity Force variation and the Sterax, if you go for the, you know, Trinity Force, Sterax, tanky, you know, off-tank bruiser type variation, obviously he's going to like it. Base damage on his Q Dragon Strike, he gets 10 at the, the final rank, so that's going to be pretty nice for him. Jax, you all know what I'm thinking right now. Base armor, 27 to 36. I mean, hell, you know, he'd take whatever he can get. Base attack damage, 61 to 70. Really, really, really big for Trinity Force. Really big for Sterax Gage. Q Leap Strike, 70 to 230, 80 to 240. Really like the flat base damage that he gets at the end there. E Counter Strike, 50 to 150 scaling, 255 to 155. Nice little buffs for Jax. He certainly needs it. Just ask, uh, just ask someone. But anyways, Jace, okay, what's going on here? Base attack damage. Jace, another champion that doesn't really go uh, Trinity Force or Iceborne Gauntlet, so doesn't benefit from that all that much. Uh, base armor, another champion that was flexible in it, so it doesn't uh, entirely mean that it's a buff, doesn't mean it's really a nerf. Uh, base health goes up, HP per level. Uh, shock Blast damage is actually up by a flat, flat 10, um, so I like that at the very end. To the Skies is up by a flat 10. Uh, Empowered Mercury Hammer up by five. So nice little Jace changes. Uh, base attack damage 53 to 61, base armor 20 to 29. Um, Jin, uh, not a champion that I, I think benefits from this all that much, um, so that's okay there. Jinx, uh, base uh, attack damage 58 to 66, base armor 22 to 32, this is all fine, that's generic. Um, base armor 19.1 to 28, and then base attack damage. Now this is interesting for Callista because she has the modification to her, uh, her AD or her attack, so I think these changes are fine for Callista. Uh, Karma, generic. Karthus, generic. Kassadin, generic. Uh, Katarina, generic. Uh, yeah, Katarina, generic. Kale is generic, but she'll definitely appreciate this. Uh, Kennen is generic, um, although sometimes this could actually be perceived as a nerf depending on the matchup. Um, also, it is a nerf to AP Kennen, so. Kha'Zix, uh, base armor increased from 27 to 36, base attack damage also increased, but again, not a champion that really builds Trinity Force or Iceborne. Uh, base damage on Unseen Threat, he only gets actually four, um, so not, not the biggest buff, but, you know, something that he'll take. Um, it's obviously going to be a noticeable buff uh, in the early stages. Uh, Taste Their Fear, 60 to 160, 65 to 165, W Void Stike, 80 to 205. Really big buff on Void Spike, really like that for Kha'Zix, I think he's a champion that does need to get a little bit of love. Um, Kindred, base attack damage 57 to 65. Kindred's a champion that actually can get Trinity Force, so this is uh, this is an interesting little change for her. Base armor, she gets a flat 9. Now that's actually going to be a buff because, I, to my knowledge, Kindred actually did not go for the flat 9 armor seals. So regardless, um, this is obviously be appreciated by her. Uh, 5 base damage, Dance of Arrows, Mounting Dread, she gets 5 base, so... Really nice for her there. Kled, uh, or they, did I just assume, you know, the, the gender? I don't know. Kled, uh, base armor 26 to 35, base attack damage. Kled um, usually goes for Black Cleaver, uh, opting out of the Trinity Force, so not really going to talk about too much there. Bear on the Rope um, gets 10 flat base damage on the Yoink, or the Yank. Uh, initial base damage, he ends up getting 5. Pocket Pistol, he ends up getting 5. Uh, percentage health damage on Violent Tendencies is up by 0.5, that's nice, um, depending on who he's up against. And then uh, E-Jousting, that's the term that I, I love to use, um, up by 5, so Kled gets a little bit of love. Kog'Maw, Trinity Force Kog'Maw, uh, getting a little bit of love, but currently that's not the variation that you go for on him, but who knows with the next, you know, with the runes and stuff. I mean, this is stuff that I, I probably could comment a little bit more on had I done the rune video uh, prior, but because these patch notes just came out during the middle of a stream, getting to them right now and uh, doing this for uh, Twitch chat. You know, I, I love you guys. But uh, yeah, so again, the Runes Masteries video. Once I make that, I'll probably come back and reflect on some of the champions and, uh, you know, what it actually means for their changes. Mostly champions like Kog'Maw that I said, you know, I, I don't entirely know how much this is actually going to impact them. Uh, you know, the Atrox, for instance, another champion, Fiddlesticks, etc. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. So now let's go to uh, L through R. Um, so LeBlanc, generic, uh, base armor on Lee Sin, uh, base attack damage, uh, Lee Sin again another champion, does not use Iceborne or Trinity Force, very generic changes here, does get 10 damage uh, base on Tempest, so I'm sure that he'll appreciate that. 
Leona uh, gets a lot of armor, so I don't know why they're seemingly giving 20 armor uh, to all the, the Targon supports. Maybe there's some sort of a reason for that instead of just giving them 10. Um, and I'm not, it's, it's not crossing my mind right now, or it's not, you know, coming up immediately when I think about it. Uh, w Eclipse gets a little bit of a buff. Uh, Lissandra, generic. Uh, base attack damage. Now, this is possibly a nice buff for Lucian. Um, because again, one of the old variations of Lucian did actually include Trinity Force, if anyone remembers that version of Lucian. So again, uh, waiting on uh, runes, like I talked about, you know, I have to see what happens for Kogma. Probably have to see what happens for Lucian. Uh, Lulu, you know what? Uh, Malphite, no, but I actually really like Lulu, so just a, a generic change right here. I actually think it's going to be, a, it, it nerfs top Lulu, uh, well, I'm sorry, not top, it nerfs mid Lulu. Um, everywhere else, it's probably going to be a generic change, so we got that. Uh, Malphite, base armor, only going up by about 9. Uh, bonus attack speed at level 1 obviously helps some variations of the old uh, Malphite runes the, that he would take. So Malphite, very uh, fine. Generic Malzahar, generic uh, Maokai, uh, base attack damage, Master Yi, another champion, does not build Trinity Force, doesn't really care about these changes. Uh, although I do think that he'll like the base armor that he's receiving. Misfortune, uh, another champion, doesn't benefit from the base attack damage all that much, unless, does she have a, a base AD ratio? Maybe she actually does, and thus that actually uh, ties in, um, rather than a, a total AD or a, uh, a bonus AD. Oh, I, I guess that's another thing, uh, by the way, is, you know, maybe this actually impacts bonus ADs negatively. Uh, base health for Mordekaiser going up, base armor, um, so this is actually going to be nerfing some versions of Mordekaiser's previous rune setups. Um, it obviously impacts top Mordekaiser and bot Mordekaiser a lot more than mid Mordekaiser, although it's not always going to be a nerf, so I think that's fine. Uh, Morgana base health is slightly changed, very generic change. Nami, very generic change. Base armor on uh, Nasus, he actually gets a little bit of love. Also really likes this because Nasus is a champion that builds either Trinity Force or Iceborne Gauntlet, so he's going to appreciate that buff. Base armor on Nautilus, he only gets 10, generic there. Nidalee, base attack damage. This really helps the heal, like, priest version of Nidalee that goes for the Athenes with the Iceborne Gauntlet, um, but other than that, doesn't really help her out all that much. Uh, base attack damage on Nocturne, this is going to be seen as a buff in some cases if Nocturne ends up building Sterax. I don't think the Nocturne is going to be a champion that builds Iceborne or Trinity Force, so not going to really talk about it there. Five base damage on the Duskbringer. Nunu, um, <clears throat> again, not, not a super big change, um, but probably a change that he will appreciate uh, a little bit because he just, you know, he, did, he didn't actually really use armor to my knowledge, uh, if you knew what you were doing, um, but then again, he's not a champion that's all that popular. Olaf, base attack damage. Again, not really going to benefit too much from it. I do like the fact that he gave his, his undertow a base 10 damage, though. Um, Orianna, uh, base health 517 to 530. Okay, generic change there. Pantheon, uh, this is a champion that this is going to be a nerf. Uh, basic, uh, or actually, um, it's going to be a pretty big buff because he didn't use uh, all armor on his yellows. Base attack damage is up, however, it doesn't impact him because of the way that he builds. He does get a 10 base damage on his Q Spear Shot, uh, E Heart Seeker. Um, is up in damage as well, uh, so obviously he's gonna like the Heartseeker change, so we got that. Um, Poppy, uh, base armor is going up, so that's actually gonna be a little bit of a nerf. Iceborne Gauntlet does go on Poppy though, so uh, we'll see how that actually impacts her. She's a champion that's been missing from the meta for quite a long time. Um, she actually does have some good matchups into uh, some of the champions that have been buffed up above, so we'll see what ends up going on there. She gets some nice little flat base ratios. Nothing too big. Base attack damage on Quinn and armor. Uh, Quinn will like that. Base armor, Ramus only getting 9 bonus attack speed, however. Uh, so not really too many changes for Ramus there. Queen's Wrath. I always forget that Rek'Sai is a female. Um, you know, so base armor 24 to 33. Uh, base attack damage 57 to 66. Rek'Sai doesn't benefit from that. Doesn't build Ice Born or Trinity Force. Um, and then gets some base damage to compensate elsewhere. So generic changes to Rek'Sai. Uh, base damage on Renekton. Um, Nice little changes right here for a slice and dice, but other than that, very generic. Uh, Rengar, base armor up, bonus attack damage up. This is actually really good for top Rengar, because top Rengar does in fact actually build Trinity Force in some uh, some instances, alternatively just builds Black Cleaver. Base armor is up for Riven, base attack damage is also up, doesn't matter, matter that much about the base attack damage. Runic charge duration increased from 5 seconds to 6 seconds. W, key burst, increased from 50 to 170 to 55 to 175. And then Shield Strength increased from 90 to 210 to 95 to 215, so Riven, good. Um, 
All right, so base health, uh, you know, no, no one likes Riven. I'm sorry, Adrian, if you ever watch this. But anyways, Rumble, uh, generic changes here, and then Rise, uh, relatively generic changes. All right, so now we're gonna get to uh, S through U. We're gonna try to speed this up because I'm just gonna assume that it's uh, it's basically just like above. So if it's just generic or if it's an obvious Iceborne Trinity uh, thing, I'm just gonna say Trinity Iceborne and then we'll, we'll move on. Uh, so generic here, uh, base attack damage, uh, Trinity Iceborne, if Shaco goes Trinity, uh, base, uh, so Shen is getting, uh, no, Shen, not really that great, generic here, uh, generic here, uh, generic here, although I have seen people go Iceborne on him, so we've got that going for us, got a generic change right here as well, um, Trinity Iceborne here, uh, generic here, Soraka, great, generic, base health, generic, generic, uh, base armor really like the change for Tom Kench, but again, I don't I don't know why are they giving 20 to Targon supports that that's confusing me a little bit um, Maybe it's primarily because they're not giving them HP and they assume that they're all building HP or something and other champions are getting HP uh, Talia base health 520 to 532 uh, generic Talon uh, base armor base attack damage base health health growth stat Okay, 160 175 uh, levels 1 through 11. So this is a nice little change for his uh, blades end Noxian Diplomacy, 160 to 165, and then 160 to 170. Like the little uh, base buffs that he get, but overall pretty generic. Base armor, again, up by 20. So Targon supports are getting a lot of love in the armor department. Uh, passive, uh, Bravado, 25 to 93. Obviously, the initial one is, is good. Um, so this really helps him out at the early levels, you know, uh, very slightly, but still it's noticeable. And then everything else is generic. Uh, we're not going to talk about Satan. Uh, base attack damage, uh... I mean, these changes don't really matter. Uh, Teemo is not supposed to build Trinity Force or Ice One. Unless your name's IPAV and you're trying to grief your teammates, although I don't even think he actually is that insane to go uh, Trinity Force or Ice One. Alright, so uh, Thresh, uh, pretty generic. Um, Tristana base attack damage, everything here is uh, pretty generic. He actually gets some base damage on explosive charge, that's nice. Uh, this is actually really big for Trundle. Again, Trinity Force, Ice One Gauntlet. Uh, Trindomir, um, not really too big of a change for Trindomir. Uh, base health, base stats, generic, uh, generic. Uh, Udir, generic, terrible champion. Urgot. Last patch, we tried to make Urgot's abilities more reliable, but we think we went a bit too far on Q, so we're partially reverting that change. No. So, a lot of people uh, I've seen talk about Urgot, they think, I, and I personally believe, that because the coordination in solo Q is going to be less um, in other regions, uh, I think that Urgot is a little bit stronger there. He still has all of the same weaknesses inside of a team fight that he had previously, and the changes that they gave to his Q and his R still doesn't fix that. He has a lot of problems with a heavy reliance on having his summoner spell available. Um, he still feels relatively clunky. Um, he needs a lot of setup that does not just pertain to himself, and I actually just didn't feel like uh, enough of a change. And also, I was a little bit uh, wrong in underestimating how much the Sterax being removed from him could affect some of his itemization paths, uh, depending on the current game flow that uh, he'll, he'll, he'd be present in. So, really interesting here. Uh, base attack damage doesn't help him. He does not go Trinity Force, does not go Iceborne Gauntlet. <clears throat> Although I have seen Iceborne a few times, but I don't think it's that good of a build. Um, time before detonation is increased by 0.10 seconds, so don't really know what they're trying to do with Urgot. I hope that they uh, take another look at him and maybe try to give him some tools that would actually make him a little bit more competitively viable and uh, more viable at the highest MMRs. Varus, base attack damage 54 to 63, okay. Uh, Hail of Arrows, a little bit of a buff, generic. Uh, base attack damage on Vayne. This only helps out if Vayne goes for the Trinity Force build. Everything else is relatively okay. Uh, generic, generic, uh, base armor, base attack, this only helps again, Trinity Force, really like the base buffs, however, to her. Victor, I hope to god Crown picks, uh, Victor for the skin and Victor actually gets buffed, he's in a bad spot. Vladimir, generic, uh, Volley Bear, generic, I don't know when they're gonna buff him again. I think he's in line for a rework. Uh, Warwick, generic, Wukong is generic, although I have seen Wukong sometimes build, uh, Trinity Force instead of Black Cleaver, so I mean they got that going and they got a little bit of base damage for him as well. Generic here, uh, generic here as well, although Trinity Force again, so a nice little buff for him. Uh, base health and base attack damage, yeah, so it doesn't really build uh, Trinity Force, so not really uh, too much of a change there. York Mori, base armor is up, base attack damage, so a little bit of a buff for him. 
Uh, last rights, dig on the foundations, now affects turrets. That's a nice little buff. I'm sure Mac Noon's very happy. Zach, base armor 24 to 33. Okay, changes there. Um, Zach is someone that I think he's actually just sort of forgotten. I think that people really undervalue um, and underappreciate how much he can actually offer to a team comp. I think that people took his, his last nerfs a little bit way too serious. So we'll see if the runes can propel him back into the meta. Um, okay, health growth stat, base AD. This only matters if you go Trinity Force on Zed. Um, okay, uh, health, generic, generic, and generic. Okay. Um, items, coin line, spell thieves, edge line, and targon shield line. Similar to the base stats adjustments, you want to make sure that the supports have the ability to spec into bandit. To make it less of a direct uh, rune trade-off, we're pushing that uh, mastery uh, passive into support items. All support starting items now have bandit as a passive effect. It's a pretty good change. This actually helps. Um, one of the things that I, I think I talked about, maybe it wasn't in the last patch rundown video, but uh, it was possibly just something that I talked about on stream, is that I really hope that the carry mage supports come back, or like the variations like Malzahar, Misfortune, Karma, uh, you know, with the Spell Thieves line, Vigar support is something that I think is uh, a little bit under-researched. Um, so, I mean, we can talk about that more in the future. Uh, Targon Shield Line. Killing a minion with Spiral's Ward now heals for 2% of the missing health in addition to the flat heal. Really nice change right there. Uh, Spell Thief's Edge. Gold is 8 to 10. Damage 10 to 13. Frost Rain, Frost Queens. Damage 5 to 18. Okay. So, I've absolutely removed the 10% cooldown reduction from the tooltip, but we guarantee it is there. Okay. Poacher's Dirk. Read the Jungle Experience section for context. Combined cost 250 to 150. Okay. Camps need to transform three to four. This is an item that um, I never really saw get built, but perhaps, uh, I mean, with, with the 500 gold total cost uh, unchanged, all of this means is that you can actually recall one camp sooner, but that doesn't actually mean anything when you now just need one camp more. And if you could have actually cleared uh, the camp sooner relative to needing the extra 100 gold sooner that you could have got for the transformation, this ends up being a, a nerf. Camp cooldown, uh, cooldown removed, cooldown between camps. To oh, never mind. This is good. This will actually help uh, Lethality Jungler, so I was getting a bit ahead of myself. Experience. Take down experience. We, when we implemented the Team Catch experience, we intended it to be a mechanic to keep supports relevant, relevant in levels, but the impact has largely been to snowball teams which are already ahead. Uh, remove no longer... Well, it only snowballed teammates that were behind that got their teammates ahead. Uh, remove no longer relevant. Earning a killer assist while below your team's average level. That's stupid. Okay. Uh, jungle XP. Comeback jungle experience is important to ensuring that an early game deficit isn't too hard to come back from, but at the moment it's creating some weird patterns. First, it's just too much overall, so we're cutting the total amount significantly. Second, linking it to little monsters has made one side of the map, Raptors and Krugs, disproportionately important to secure. Putting the bonus for experience on the large monsters instead balances the sides out while making it more rewarding to counter jungle. We're also taking this moment to standardize uh, jungle CS indicators because camps had widely different numbers of monsters in them. CS becomes a pretty poor marker of gold. Is the enemy jungler out farming you or have they just taken Krugs and Raptors twice? With this change, it should be easier to ballpark a jungler strength lead from a uh, competitive CS. Okay, combo expect to XP. Uh, 30 poor per level behind uh, any monster, 50 XP per level behind only on large or epic. So this messes with a lot of the openings that used to exist, uh, takes them away, it takes away the opponent needing to respect them, obviously with uh, the changes that have happened anyway to runes and masteries and whatnot, uh, I mean that was going to be taken away anyway, but really don't like this change. Um, someone that uh, you know gets also uh, buffed in a sense from this is actually Ivern. Um, because now it's actually a little bit more obnoxious to counter jungle against him. Um, because now if you just take the big one, he actually just takes the small ones and he moves on really quickly. So now you actually have to take all the small ones, which you're not being rewarded for. And then you have to leave him, uh, or yeah, you have to, you have to take the big one and leave him with the small ones. Whereas previously you could take the small ones, leave him with the big one, but now that's not really going to do that much. Uh, first player experience reduction no longer applies to wolf camp or small razor beaks. And I'll be able to reach level two by starting at the wolf camp. Okay. Prompt first player experience reduction. 25% to 50%, okay? Red Brambleback, 200 XP to 180. Blue Sentinel, 200 to 180. All camps are now worth four monsters. St. Vicious is celebrating somewhere because I heard that he was still on Google. Um, little Razor Beaks are now 0.4 monsters. So, I mean, th these are terrible changes for a lot of reasons. You're talking about something that, yes, while it was simple, it still meant that you have to do it. There's a lot of things in the game that are very simple, but it doesn't mean that you don't have to do it. You have to, you know, keep track of them. They're like uh, triggers in a card game or something if you're playing paper and, you know, you're playing in person. Just because it's simple doesn't mean that you neglect it. There was a lot of people that can do a lot of simple things, but they choose not to do it. And ultimately, if it's able to be used 
uh, in an advantageous sense, then you should be doing it. And there are people that are lazy. They don't want to do it. They, they want to just have it you know, be easier and more simple so they can focus on other things. That, that really detracts and takes away from the people that were doing everything that they were doing in addition to doing this. And it really, I mean, it, it negatively impacts uh, the skill ceiling of the game. So uh, I, I think, it, I, I think this is, these changes are really poor. I'm not an advocate of these changes, but you know, whatever. We're gonna, we're gonna deal with it. We're gonna suck it up and uh, you know, whatever. All right, extra damage to minions. With the removal of masteries that bought a bit of PvE damage to the table, we wanted to ensure that champions didn't feel overly weak against lane minions. We will be continuing to evaluate the power of this as we see adjustments to runes and champions. Basic attacks will find bonus damage to lane minions. So now everyone actually gets the five points in savagery, whereas not everyone actually took it before. So that's, uh, that's a pretty interesting thing. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a bigger buff to certain champions, uh, whereas other champs that took Wanderer and didn't really need the five points in savagery, or they just didn't go into that tree at all, uh, is just going to receive a free buff. All right. Game start time, 120 seconds to 1 minute and 10 seconds. So now gold actually... Uh, starts going up sooner. This actually affects some clears um, a little bit, I think, um, you know, where you would end up recalling and waiting on fountain just a little bit. Home, uh, home start effect when the game starts is now stronger now. Okay, um, so again, this also detracts from some creative starts because now there should be no excuse from getting to the halfway point of the map um, before your opponent if you're going to be doing it defensively and then applying your champion's range. So I, I, don't, I don't like these changes. I, 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 I'm not an advocate of diminishing uh, and taking away from the skill ceiling of a game. I, I think that it just caters and gives people crutches that they otherwise didn't deserve. Um, champ select, we're temporarily adding 15 seconds to the select loadout part of the champion select to give people more time to pick their rooms. Okay, I think, that, I think that's a pretty fair, uh, it's a pretty fair change. Uncapped leveling. Uh, the level 30 cap has been removed and the new cap is infinity. Instead of getting IP after every game, you'll receive a capsule every time you level up. Capsules almost always contain champion charge exceptions to this wheel on certain milestones such as 50, 75, 100, where you can get an extra goodie. When these levels are reached, you'll get exclusive rewards to show off your status in game. These rewards include a special high level reward skin milestone. So basically all of this means to me is that I get an additional headache when someone donates to me for an OPGG and they tell me that they're level 176 and they really know what they're doing. All right. Anyways, IP turns into Blue Essence. All right, I wonder what that, this actually does for Riot accounts. Do, do people just get an infinite amount of Blue Essence or something? We're connecting the leveling and loot systems by merging IP and Blue Essence. The newer Bluer Essence will work in places of IP and uh, B worked before, including loot and champion store. Uh, everything in the store will now cost the same as it did in the old IP based system. For example, a newer champ like Kane will be 60, uh, 6,300 Blue Essence, okay? Level one through 30, we're shortening the time it takes to get to level 30. Lots of people that made accounts and leveled accounts in recent times are crying somewhere. For improvement on the changes, check out the preseason FAQ, okay? Uh, changes to boosts. IP boosts are being removed from the store. XP boosts will still be available. Any active IP boosts will automatically get converted to XP boosts. One of the things that I like about this um, is I, I like that they're keeping the level 30 thing. A lot of people um, I see comment or ask me, you know, in the past what I think about leveling 1 through 30. I think it's pretty good. It, it's, it's a way to properly fight back against trolls and really make them hate the experience. It's a type of prison when the account gets banned. You know, you, you go and serve your time leveling 1 through 30. Now, much like the American prison system, you probably come out a little bit more toxic than you were before you went in, but, you know, to each their own. So anyways, um, one of the things that I like is that they're keeping the level one through thirty. This desens, uh, you know, this uh, dissuades people from just constantly making new accounts, buying level thirties, trolling people, inting, griefing people, you know, having all those types of like unranked to challenger type things, or people that intentionally drop all the way to bronze and cause teammates to intentionally lose so that they can do bronze five to challenger. Um, you know, I, I I get the point of those videos and stuff, uh, but I, I, it doesn't make it okay to intentionally cause others to lose a game simply because they queued up at the same time as you and were unfortunate enough to uh, get on your team. Uh, I like that the XP boosts are still there. Maybe this means that you can get level 30 in like a day now if you stack a boost and you know what you're doing uh, and you know you have like uh, teammates that are helping you and you know it ends up becoming like a Diablo 3 run or something where you know just figure out the fastest way to do it. Uh, but yeah, uh, rotating game modes. I don't really care all too much about this um, so we're not going to talk about that too much. Skins and bug fixes. Uh, I'm just going to look, uh, doesn't look like there's anything. Okay, that's, that's pretty big. All right. 
Uh, emotes and loot. Emotes are now available to drop in Hextech crafting. That's good. Upcoming skins and chromas. Mecha Rengar, Victorious Graves, Gold Plus Ranked Reward, Lancer Paragon, Blitzcrank. I think that probably sounds super cool. Lancer Rogue, Blitzcrank. So I don't know what these are in reference to, but um, I think these two skins are probably going to be really cool. Mecha Rengar, it just doesn't do it for me, you know. Victorious Graves, I mean, I'm, I'm really sad that Graves got the skin. I think there were other champions that definitely could have been deserving of getting a Victorious skin, but you know what, whatever. Uh, so I really hope that <clears throat> uh, he gets changed. Uh, so are these the chromas for Graves? Let me just open these really quick. Let me make sure that they're on the screen. Okay, well, that white cape, that sort of makes him... I, that white cape one is pretty good. I, I think the white cape one is, is, is pretty good. I actually like, uh, I, I like this one a lot. Um, let's take a look at Mecha Kha'Zix and see the chromas. I'm definitely not being paid by Riot to do this, by the way. Um, but anyways, um, white Kha'Zix, pretty cool. Base Kha'Zix, pretty cool. Um, the Bumblebee Kha'Zix, pretty cool. If you pick uh, purple or green here, I mean, I feel bad for you. Blue Kha'Zix, I can't remember what this reminds me of, but it's like something from a video game, like War of the Monsters 2 or something on Super Nintendo. This really reminds me of something from that. Pink Kha'Zix, I mean, it's acceptable. Um, so in addition to releasing a new champion, uh, they also release uh, some chromas for him. I think that's really nice of them. Even has a skin. I mean, they didn't even tell us they released a mecha skin for him. Um, the white Atrox is pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of Tyrael uh, in a way from Diablo, so I think that's okay. Uh, mecha Rengar. Um, okay, some of these actually look really, really cool. Some of these, okay, like the, the red and white one, that's badass. The blue and white one, that's badass. Okay, purple, I mean, I don't know how or why anyone would ever pick purple. It's sort of like the, the Mecha Malphite. That's just an abomination of a skin. I'm just, I'm sorry it is. Okay, uh, red, eh. Uh, you know, so one, two, three, really, really cool. Uh, the orange one, this reminds me of like a bad version of Cyrax from Mortal Kombat. The base skin as well doesn't really do it to me. You know, it, it's, I, I really don't like the shade. Of, uh, of brown that they went with here. You know, I'm not, I'm just not feeling it. So that's it for the patch 7.22 notes rundown. Again, I will be coming back to some of the champions that I talked about, uh, and I couldn't add too much comments on them at this point in time when I do the, the runes evaluation. So I'm gonna actually have to take a lot of time looking at those off stream because now they are announced. I didn't want to make a video on them before they were officially announced. Um, because I just thought, you know, hey, anything can change up until their official announcement. I don't want to be reading stuff on the PBE because I've seen too often things make it to the PBE and they don't end up making it to the live game. So make sure to check that video out. I'll probably try to have that uh, out within the next 42 hours or 42, 48 hours. Um, try to have that out on my YouTube. So looking forward to that.